Well, good morning and welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church, and this is our continued digital web space. And thank you for being here in worship with us today on this now third Sunday of Advent. As we continue this season of preparation and awaiting, we do so rejoicing along the way. Uh, and today, I am so glad you are here with us because we have great cause for celebration here at United in Christ. As today in worship today, we welcome 12 new members to the life and ministry of this congregation. I know, Marilyn, that's a... It's a dude. <laughs> it's, it's enough to knock your socks off. Uh, but we. <laughs> We are very excited to welcome all of them today in worship. We'll hear from them later in our service. But for now, simply let us say thank you. Thank you for being here to be a part of this ongoing life of God's ministry unfolding into this world in this season. Thank you for being here to be a part of that process today. Uh, our service begins with the confession and forgiveness. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to the first of our worship volunteers. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess, confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, in God's love comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God 
to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planning of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose days draws near. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. <laughs> then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Now, this took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This time, I'd like to invite all the young or the young at heart to gather around the front for the children's message. So, today is the third Sunday of Advent. Did you light three candles on your Advent wreath? So, Advent is the season of waiting. What are we waiting for? Do you remember? Right, we're waiting for Christmas. Are you getting excited? Are you all decorated and have all the goodies baked and all that kind of stuff that to get ready? 
Maybe not yet, but you're getting close, right? Right. So, I bet at Christmas time, I bet you get some presents, don't you? What's your favorite kind of thing to get at Christmas? What's your favorite present? Is it toys? I like to get toys. Toys are fun, right? Um, so here's, I bet you have seen a toy ad, something like this. And you might have used this to show someone what you'd really like for Christmas. Like a baby Yoda. I love baby Yoda. Isn't he cute? Or maybe an art set or race cars. Or how about a tarantula? Oh, not in my house. I don't like spiders, not even toy spiders. But sometimes we use pictures like this and to say to somebody, you know, I really like this, right? So if you opened your present on Christmas morning and you had the picture of what you wanted, how would you feel? Maybe a little let down? What can you do with a picture, right? Even if the picture tells you how to play with the toy or all the things that it can do, it's still not real. It's just the picture that you use. So you use the picture to point to something so that if somebody saw it in a store, they would recognize it, right? That's what we do. We point things out so that they'll recognize them when they see it. That's actually what our story today is all about. The lesson that Pastor Justin just read is about John the Baptist. We met John last week. Remember, he was eating locusts and honey. Honey's not so bad, but I could skip on the locust, right? But what's he doing today? He's baptizing people with water for the forgiveness of their sins. Hmm. So people are starting to ask, are you the Messiah? Are you the one we were told to look for? Because they were looking for a Messiah. God, through the Old Testament prophets, had promised a Messiah, a leader, a savior for the world. And they kept looking for this person. And so they thought maybe this was John was this Messiah. Well, John wasn't the Messiah, right? His job was to point to the Messiah so that when the people saw him, they would recognize him. So who do you think John was pointing to? Right. John was pointing to Jesus. Um, and, you, and, and John was telling people about Jesus. And you know what? We can point to Jesus too. Right? Because we already know about Jesus, right? And even though we can tell people about Jesus and point to Jesus anytime, right now is probably the best time to do that. And why do you think that is? Because right now we're in the Christmas season, right? And Christmas is the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Jesus is the real message of Christmas. Not the presents, although they're kind of fun, aren't they? So, while everybody's thinking about Christmas, now's a good time to tell people about the real meaning of Christmas. That Jesus, God came down as Jesus, as a baby, for us, for you, for me, for all people, to give God's love and grace and forgiveness, right? And this is a great time to tell people about that. And so we can point to Jesus. So when you're opening your Christmas presents, remember that the true gift of the season is Jesus and that we get to share Jesus with everyone. Okay. So before we go, and after we pray, we'll pray and then you can get lollipops. So we'll fold our hands and close our eyes. Our one true God, thank you for coming to the world as the baby Jesus. 
Thank you for all the people in our lives who have pointed us to Jesus. Remind us that it's our gift and joy to be able to point others to Jesus and to share your love and grace with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, who are you? Seems to be the question of the day, doesn't it? Maybe maybe we need to rethink the inflection. Maybe I should be asking, who are you? Or maybe, maybe we need to rethink the way the question's phrased in the first place. Maybe the question of the day really isn't so much, who are you? Maybe the question is, who do you think you are? After all, it kind of seems to be the tone with which the religious officials bring the question to John today, isn't it? As we encountered the Baptist's cry out in the wilderness last week, here, even as we change gospel writers, we don't necessarily change much of the scene at hand. Here, once again, in this now third week of preparation, in this third week of Advent, we encountered John's voice out in the wilderness, getting the people ready, preparing them for what is to come next. But here, unlike in Mark's gospel last week, here we actually have a little bit of the dialogue taking place. Here we hear about what some of the other voices around John were wondering as they heard about this guy crying out in the wilderness. They want to know. They want to know who this voice is. The the religious officials in particular want to understand by what authority this John is doing the things he claims to do. They want to know how it is he can possibly be offering a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. They want to know just who he is. They want to know who this guy thinks he could be. But like a witness who's ready to dodge every question on this stand, John simply isn't having any of their interrogation. Do you notice it? Do you notice the ways in which John manages to obfuscate and dance around any semblance of a decent answer for the religious officials? When they ask him, when they finally very bluntly put it to John, asking who he is, he answers in three parts. Well, well, I'm not the Messiah, and... Well, I'm not Elijah, and for that matter, I'm not any prophet either. In this question about his very identity, John, rather than declaring and staking a claim as to who he is in the positive, instead only offers three negatives about who he isn't. John must have been one of the most frustrating witnesses to ever have to get an answer out of. Because the way he just dances around it makes clear that he is not having any part of the religious official's question. Maybe, Maybe that's what John the Gospel writer wants us to hear in the midst of this episode. Maybe as we who read the story or hear it again, watch as John dances around the religious official's questions, maybe... Maybe we are seeing play out before our very eyes the indictment of the question itself. Because really, when John finally does get to a sense of his identity, he makes clear that it's not even about him in the first place. As John finally makes clear by the end of our gospel text today, just what it is he is there to do about what he is there to proclaim John makes clear that the question they asked him in the first place was an ill-placed question to begin with. The question of who are you, the question posed to John by these religious officials, it simply doesn't make sense. For John, in the course of his own ministry, it's a question that has no purpose whatsoever. It's a question that even if he were to answer, wouldn't provide them with any great insight. It wouldn't provide them with any sense of great answers to go back with because the question misses the point altogether. 
As John makes clear by the end of this text about what his role is as one who comes as a witness to testify to this light that is coming into this world, as he points out to the religious officials that there is one among them who is even greater than he, whom he is not even worthy to untie the sandal of, John makes clear that their question doesn't make sense. Because who is he? (laughs) Well, he's nobody when you compare it to who's coming next. John makes clear in his response that he he is of no concern. What matters isn't who he is. What matters is the one who is coming after him. As John, the gospel writer, makes clear at the beginning of this text, John the Baptist's role over the course of this story isn't to blow himself up. It isn't to give himself a self-inflated sense of call or ministry. John's entire purpose is to point the way to the one who's coming next. John's voice is simply the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way because God is on the move. John, in refusing to answer this question of who he is, makes clear that the priorities of those who are listening shouldn't be on him in the first place at all. Their priorities should be the one who is coming to greet them. And and as we find ourselves in the midst of our Advent preparations, maybe, maybe the question that the religious officials bring today is one we have often asked ourselves. Maybe we too have asked, who are you? Who am I to be a part of this process? Maybe we have wondered, are we even worthy to be a part of this call? Are we worthy to be a part of this announcement of God's arrival into this world? Are we going to be found worthy of that proclamation or worthy to be recipients of what God has in store? But what John reminds us today in in a way that might take us to the mat in unexpected turns. What John reminds us is that, is that it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about the one who is arriving. But it's the one who is arriving for you. See, as John points the way to this Messiah who is breaking into the world's midst, he makes clear that he has no ground to stand upon in front of this Messiah. He makes clear that his place in the world is infinitesimally small when compared to what this Messiah will bring for the sake of this world. And yet, And yet in that identity and in that reminder is the call that says that this is still the Messiah who comes for John as well. Even though John is a nobody in the grand scheme of things, this is the Messiah who comes for him and for those who gather with him alongside the river. And just the same, as we find ourselves three weeks now into this season of preparation, as we find ourselves in these moments where we might even be questioning our own sense of identity, of who we are to stand in the midst of this process, here too we have a reminder that it's not about you. It's not about how much you measure up. You don't even have to be on the scale of worthiness, but nevertheless, God is arriving for you. The hope and promise of this Advent season is that God is breaking into this world. And as we heard from the prophet Isaiah this morning, that is cause for rejoicing. It's cause for celebration because this arrival means changing everything for the sake of this world. When God breaks into this scene, don't you see? It doesn't matter who you are any longer. Because God, when God arrives, God claims you as enough. God claims you as worthy. God claims you as an object of God's love and God's life. So who are you? You might not have the answer, but rest assured that part of it entails being claimed in God's love and life. 
Because you have been called. You are chosen as voices in this wilderness journey. You too can point the way for Christ's arrival in our midst. Because God is still coming. Christ's arrival is closer than we might think. So may we point the way. May we point the way for the sake of this world to catch a glimpse of what this arrival of love and life in God's name can be and look like for this world. Thanks be to God. Amen. People look east, the time is here, of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able, trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today, love the guest is on the way. Furrows be glad the work is fair. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of United in Christ. Kendall and Tara and Mary Lou and Bob and Teresa and Ron and Linda and Terry and Maya and Dylan and Chad and Dale and Cheryl have come to our congregation from many and disparate locations. And so with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And so, siblings in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptisms among God's people in this place? If so, say we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do. I do. I do. We do. We do. We do. We do. We do. And do you, people of God at United in Christ, promise to support and pray for these new members in their life together in Christ? If so, say and drop here in the comments, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Because we do. 
and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us therefore welcome these siblings in Christ to this community of faith. And may I, on behalf of the congregation, say that we rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. As we gather once again for our prayers of intercession for the prayers of the people, we're going to invite you to make continued use of our prayer sheets, uh, our coloring sheets that are available as a link in the bulletin, or you can look on our social media platforms for those as well. Uh, but we'll color those together as we bring these prayers before God today. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of welcome, we give you thanks for our new members. For Teresa and Bob, for Dale and Cheryl, for Tara and Kendall, for Ron and Linda, for Mary Lou, for Terry and Maya and Dylan and Chad, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in service to others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythm of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness, that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fires, floods, earthquakes, or storms. Support the work of the Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and the helpless, you close us, clothe us with the strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Today, especially, we pray for Frank and Bertie, for Ryan, for Judy, for Ken, for Dale, for Donna, for Dale, and for those we name before you now out loud in the silence of our hearts or here in the comments before our siblings in Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's do the work of sharing signs of that peace with one another in whatever ways are available to us once again this week, in phone calls, in text messages, in, and Christmas greeting cards this time of year. May we share and embody that peace for the sake of this world around us. And thank you.
Thank you for being here with us in worship today. Uh, as we continue with worship, just a few couple of quick announcements. Once again, just the warmest of welcomes to all of our new members here at United in Christ. We are so excited to be partnering with you here in ministry through this life of this congregation. Uh, we are excited to join together in what God is up to through this community. Uh, we are so glad that you are here to be a part of that with us. Um, if you are one of the many visitors who have plugged in with us here at United in Christ over the years, we would love to get to know you as well. Uh, here in the comments, we invite you, I, I know that there are a number of visitors who are too tuning in with us from all over the, well, honestly, all over the country. Uh, and so if you are one of those folks, we would love to get to know you better. Drop a line, drop a comment here in the section on our Facebook stream. Uh, tell us where you're viewing from, where you are tuning in from. We would love to get to know you in this way, uh, in our life together as a digital community of faith. Uh, so we would love to get to know you to better in that way. Uh, as well, as we look ahead to the coming weeks here at United in Christ, uh, we continue to look forward to the ways in which we will continue to be a faith community for this Christmas season. Uh, so please know that uh, as we prepare for our Christmas Eve worship services, we will have an online worship service available just as this format is available for anyone to be able to tune in. Uh, beginning at 10 a.m. Christmas Eve, the service will go live here on Facebook and on our YouTube channel and on our website for anyone to be able to use over the course of the day for whatever time fits well for you and your family. You can worship together. You can even share the link across households. That way, if you are maintaining a socially distanced holiday season, you can still worship together with the service. Feel free to share and use at your discretion and whatever works best for you and your family in your scheduling for Christmas Eve worship. Uh, as well, for our folks at United in Christ, we will be holding a drive-in worship service on Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll gather together in the parking lot of the church building, not leaving our cars, but rather tuning our car radios to 87.9 FM, uh, where we will make it like the old drive-in movie days to tune in for an abbreviated liturgy that evening uh, in the parking lot at United in Christ. Uh, there will be more details about that being posted in the coming weeks and the coming days, uh, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. Uh, as we continue this Advent season, we continue to support the ministries of ELCA Good Gifts. And so please know that any offerings that are marked as Advent offerings during this time will go to support the needs of places and communities around the world, uh, whether it's through farm animals or clean water supplies or school uniforms. Uh, we will continue supporting ELCA Good Gifts with our initiatives these days. Uh, and finally, as a great celebration, uh, I know that last week we announced that we are going to be sponsoring some residents up at Country Comfort with some Christmas gifts for the season uh already i think within like three days or something all of the residents whose names we've been given have been sponsored so thank you to this community for stepping up and helping out and embodying christ's presence in this community during this time that can be very isolating for many in around us as we continue with worship today though we do so then with this morning's offering so please know we continue to remain grateful for all of the ways in which you continue to partner with us here at United in Christ through your financial giving and support of the ministry of this congregation. Uh, we continue to take in and accept and process all of the checks that are sent into the church building, whether that's using your regular church offering envelopes or whether it's using our online giving platform through Tithely. Uh, I've posted a link to that digital offering plate here in the description of the video, but you can always go to unitedinchristlutheran.net slash giving and click on the green give now button to make use of that offering plate any time during the week. As we continue with worship, then we do so with our Lord's Prayer and benediction. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it to the next of our worship volunteers. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Marilyn, you can play us away. <laughs>